This question really threw me off the first time I did it. Now, uh, that's because I saw this question in the hard module. Some of you might be watching this video because you were in the easy module and it appeared. And when it did appear there, I think it was probably much you know, more in line with everything else around it. But for a hard module question to be number 17 and to be this easy, that's really weird. Because look, all we have to do is just basic function notation. F of four means you put in four for X. So this is asking what is one half of four plus six? What is one half of 10? It's five. That's it. That's the whole question. And that really scared me because hard questions are not supposed to be that easy on the SAT. And especially in the hard module and the hard section, the last half of that section, we, we really shouldn't have something that's easy. So I was like, am I misreading it? Is there something wrong? But this is maybe where my knowledge of the test itself really saved me because I know that on every module, every module on the SAT, there are two what they call pre-test questions. I sometimes call these experimental questions. They're, they don't count for your score. The College Board is using you as a, a guinea pig uh, to, test, to test new questions. They, they come up with an idea. And they're like, we got to see if this is a good question or not. So let's give it to some people. It won't count for their score, but they'll do it among all the other questions that do count for their score. So we'll be able to see based on whether people are getting it right or wrong, whether this is a question that is easy, is medium, is hard, is, is too hard, has got some sort of flaw in it. So they're doing experiments on you, basically. And they're doing it with two questions per module. And so there will always be two questions in your module that do not count, but they're not labeled. You don't know that. But because I know that those two questions exist, when I got to this, I was like, this has got to be one of the fake ones. There's no reason for this really easy question to be this late. And honestly, I don't think the real SAT would do this. I think if this were the real SAT, in this spot, you would have an equivalently hard question to whatever else is going on. So I don't love that they did this here. This this just strikes me as very strange. I don't I don't know what's what they were thinking. Um, but it, it's a reminder that yeah, there are two things on the test that won't count for your score, and this is why we shouldn't get bogged down in questions that we don't really understand, and we should skip around and just try to do the things that we understand the best because we don't maybe want to spend seven minutes on a question that doesn't even count. We won't know. Just because something's hard doesn't mean it's fake. It, it goes all sorts of ways. Plus, these are questions, these pretest questions that they want to re release eventually. They're testing them out because they want to make them part of the next version of the test or, or something like that. So you can't look at a question and be like, oh, this is too weird for the SAT. This must be the fake question. No, I mean, this one's a really straightforward fake question. So it, there's nothing weird about it at all. It's basic function notation, but just the placement of it is what alerted me to that possibility. But you know, you uh, this is me after years of experience kind of knowing as I'm doing this that something weird is happening. You just don't have that kind of experience with the test. So uh, you cannot predict what counts and what doesn't. The good news is this is easy, right? So even though it doesn't count, it's not taking up much of your time. It might make you nervous like it made me nervous that maybe there's something else here. But I don't know, it's 15 words. There's nothing to really misread, right? I mean, even if we did misread something, and got it wrong, it wouldn't hurt our score because these don't count for your score. So don't worry about it. If you have questions with the pretest thing, you can ask them, but this is just weird that they put in really easy question in this hard spot. So just, you know, I don't know, maybe it can happen on the real test. And if you do get a really weirdly easy question where you aren't expecting one, that shouldn't scare you that much. Maybe it doesn't count. You obviously have to do it just in case, but you know, uh, I don't know. The worst thing, in my opinion, is when we have a really unusually hard question in place of where we would expect there to be an easy one. That bothers me because that could really slow us down. We aren't expecting to be slowed down. So that, you know, you got to watch out for too. But I hope they don't do that because that's not fair, in my opinion. So I don't know. I've gone on and on. This is an easy one. Hopefully you got it. If you're in the easy module, then all this doesn't even matter because anything that you see in your module is fair game. So you got to make sure you're getting everything right. This is basic function notation. You got to know how to read function notation. So you're going to have that come up multiple times in your easy module. So hopefully this one is also easy for you.